Hello and welcome. In this session we'll take a look at how to create an element overview in Revit 2013. I'll show you how to draw and split wall elements, how to add information like element type and element number on the um, different wall elements and see how it can be written out in schedules. First of all, I drew a few grid lines and some walls, and as you can see, I disallowed joint on most of them. But for those of you who don't know how to do that, I will uh, demonstrate. We need to right-click on this small bullet and say disallow join, and you see now that the two uh, wall elements are um, not joined. And I'll move this one into the grid line and I'll align this one uh, with the outside like this. So now I have four walls and I would like to split them up uh, further and I do that by saying SL and um, in some cases if you zoom out and hold the uh, pin or the knife on top of the grid line and in the center of the wall, you're able to uh, split them like this. But in some cases, I'll demonstrate that, it's a bit unprecise. If I zoom in here, you'll see that they are not um, split exactly uh, at the grid line. So I'll disallow join here and I'll move them down. And I'll do the same here, disallow join and I'll move it down. And now I should have um, two elements here and here. And I have to do the same thing over here as slice and it's unprecise. Um, move them in and hopefully they won't join. Yeah. I now need to add information about element type and element number. And I do that by going to um, create a shared parameter and I'll make a new one and I'll call it I'll call it element overview say save I will group it and call the group element overview and I'll create two parameters in this case element type and that consists of uh, letters and numbers so I'll uh, make it a text parameter and I'll make another one, element um, number, and that should be, uh, let's say, integer, since it's one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Okay, okay. Based on these shared parameters, I'll create two project parameters, uh, add, and I will um, use my shared ones, select them here, add element number, add it to my walls, and group them under identity data and make sure that they are instance parameters. I'll say OK to this and I'll add one for the type as well, element type. And once again, categorize it under identity data, instances, and walls. OK. And now I'm able to go in on the individual uh, elements on their instance and say that this type um, I would give um, a mark called E1. This is identical, so I'll take E1 again. This one is identical, E1. This one has a window inside, so I might want to give that another type number, E2, apply. And I might want to give this one, let's say, E3. This one is mirrored, so this one should be um, similar. That should also be an E3. This one should be an E4, apply. And this one is identical, E4. So before starting placing numbers on them, um, I'll just create a small schedule. I'll go to my views. 
I'll make a schedule and that should be a wall schedule and in this case I would just like these two parameters to be written out my type and my number I say OK and I have it here um, in this demonstration I also have an information about the um, element number um, and that could be the order in which you are producing the elements it could also be the order in which you are uh, delivering the uh, elements um, but I'll just show you here that um, we can mark one and we can give it a number apply and it automatically appears in the uh, schedule here and we can also see that if we mark it over here um, we actually uh, are also able to type in the number over here something like this um, I think you get the point um, so I think I'll just continue by uh, creating a wall tag that's being done under annotate and tag by category and um, I don't have a tag containing these informations yet so I'll just uh, add a default one and I'll edit the family I'll delete this little circle here and I will edit the label and I would like to add um, the two informations uh, element type and element number but they don't appear here and that means that I need to go and read into my shared parameter um, and add them from that text file now it appears element number I'll add it and I will add another one which was the element type okay um, and add that as well and I might not want to see the mark um, element number and element type and I might want to break them I will load this into my project I could have given it another name but I'll just uh, override it and I'll do it into this one um, and now you see that the element number and the element type I just gave it appears here in a similar way I could um, automatically tag um, the rest of the elements manually like here or uh, in one com command the reason why I want to do it individually here is because you notice that if I move it over the window then it gets a different tag so you need to click somewhere on the um, wall or you need to um, use a tab like this whoops you also notice that I haven't um, put in um, the element number on all of them um, but that can be done afterwards manually or you can use the uh, table I'll just show you one example here I'll give that a number 3 showing the assembly order and it automatically appears here and in my tag and um, finally we could put these two drawings on a small uh, sheet my ground floor plan like this and my um, schedule looking something like this okay I hope this gave you an idea of how you could uh, create an element overview uh, with some uh, quality insurance built inside um, so you make sure you get the right amount of uh, elements I'll follow up uh, on this video with uh, two examples of how to make uh, what we call stamp drawings and flip out drawings. Thank you for listening and goodbye.